Imagine being alone in the middle of the ocean. The only thing visible is the line where the sky meets the sea. Do you know what this line is called? It's the horizon. And do you know its height? The horizon aligns with your eye level. Now, let's transition from the ocean to a flat desert, providing a stable surface. We'll place a block in the desert and observe it from the second floor. It could also be much smaller than we are. The crucial aspect is the viewpoint from above. Here's a fundamental principle. In drawing and painting perspective, all parallel lines converge at a single point on the horizon. Our block is defined by three guidelines intersecting at point T1 and three at point T2. You should never draw what you see, but what you want people to see on your drawing. The main difference between an amateur and professional art is the correct use of perspective and shading. And that's what we will learn in this video. Thank you, Theo. Now, viewing the block from the fifth floor reveals more of the upper side. And all construction lines that extend from the parallel edges still converge at a single point on the horizon. Now we go down to the ground and convert our block into a spaceship floating above us. We don't see the upper side anymore, now we see the lower one instead. The important thing is, that all parallel construction lines still converge at a single point on the horizon. Facing a larger block, we don't see the top or the bottom side anymore and parallel construction lines above and below the horizon still converge at a single point on the horizon. Making the block translucent adds more construction lines, and remarkably, they also converge at the same point. This transparent block prompts us to consider what happens within it, akin to being inside a room. Even within, if edges are parallel, guidelines between walls and the floor or ceiling intersect at a single point on the horizon. Adding a ceiling and opening in the wall reveals the horizon where the sky touches the desert. Moving outside in the desert, we add a road. Now all parallel lines converge at a single point on the horizon. Let's add some power lines to provide electricity to the next village. Tops and bottoms of columns align on construction lines parallel to the road's edges, all converging at the same point on the horizon. It is easy to make two columns, but how do we put more columns on the image? If the distance between them is the same, then the tops and the bottoms of two columns form a square and we draw both diagonals. Because the squares between all columns are equal, the diagonals between them are parallel. We must draw diagonals of the next square and where they intersect the parallel construction lines, there stands the next column. It might be confusing there are two types of parallel lines. Lines that are parallel in reality, intersect at the same point on the horizon. But diagonals we are talking about now, are parallel on the paper or screen. If you compare all red lines on this image, you will see they are all parallel. So are the blue ones. We keep repeating this process as long as needed to add all necessary columns. Maybe, now is the time to explain, why we see everything in perspective. The more far away is a column, the smaller it appears in our eye. Our pupil is lens and all beams of light cross in it in the point C. The angle between the red lines, which come from the column B is sharper than the angle of beams of the column A. Consequently, column B creates a smaller picture on the eye's background than A. It is not safe standing in the middle of the road, so we will now move to the right lane. It feels lonely in the middle of the desert, so let's create a village. Let's make some buildings on the right side of the road. They are not of the same height, but their top edges are still parallel, so are the guidelines, that converge at a single point on the horizon. There are also blue guidelines for other parallel edges. The third building is smaller, but also a bit closer to the road, which makes even more guidelines, that converge at a single point on the horizon. So does the guidelines of the building on the other side of the street. But something tricky happens here. Because some buildings are left from our point of view and the other are right, the blue guidelines on the left converge at a point on the left and the others on the right, even while the walls are parallel. We will talk about shading in a separate video, but for now just observe, how the sun shines from the left, 
making walls that point towards it the brightest, those on the other side the darkest and those, facing towards us somewhere in between. And here we see, how the parallel blue guidelines from the left intersect in a single point that lies left of the paper. So does those on the right. People in the left building want to see on the street, so we will make a window for them. The top and the bottom of the window are parallel with the road, so its guidelines intersect at the end of the road. To prevent burglars to enter throughout that window, we will install some bars in the middle. To find the middle point where the bars intersect, we must draw those orange diagonals. Windows are usually put a bit inverts. Notice the middle blue line on the left side, that point to the edge of the window. Even such small details follow the same rules of perspective as everything else, so also this guideline converge at a point as the parallel edges of the house. Houses in the desert don't need roofs, but with climate changes you never know. Roofing a block involves drawing diagonals to find the middle point. Now we can place the top of the roof on the right place. Remember, we see the remote half of the wall smaller than the one nearer to us. What is a desert without a pyramid? To draw one, we need diagonals again. An upright line from the intersection of diagonals and here is our pyramid. A virtual pyramid for virtual pheromones. Don't forget that perspective holds true for everything. Not just with a pharaoh's mask, but with every three-quarter view portrait, parallel lines of eyebrows, eyes, nostrils, lips, bottom side of the cheek and all other converge at a single point on the horizon. Paul Cezanne once said, everything in nature is formed upon the sphere, the cone and the cylinder. One must learn to paint these simple figures and then one can do all that he may wish. The tricky part is, that they are all circular and drawing a perfect circle in perspective is not easy. We must help ourselves by drawing a square around our circle. We find the center of the circle by drawing a square and its diagonals. The most important thing is to make the circle parallel to the sides of the square at points A, B, C, and D, where the circle touches the square. The small letters A, B, C, and D represent the brown straight lines, which the circle must be parallel to in those points. After we draw the circle, we can control how well it fits by drawing the orange square and the control points W, X, Y, and Z. A circle is a base to draw a sphere, cylinder, and cone. You always draw a sphere as a circle, and you must shade it to make it a sphere. To find the center of the cone, we use diagonals of the square, just as we did with the pyramid. The cylinder, on the other hand, has two circular sides. We see each of them from a different angle, so one is flatter than the other. Pink lines are guidelines to fit both circles perfectly one above the other. Now take a pencil and a paper and start drawing. You will realize that modern architecture mostly uses squares and straight lines, and you will soon learn to draw great modern architecture and design. Drawing older architecture and interior is not much more complicated, just don't get stuck in details. And when you draw other objects, always try to see them as a combination of basic geometric forms. To make your drawings or paintings alive, you must shadow them right, and we will talk about it in our next video. The link is somewhere above. And don't forget that you show your artistic attitude if you like, share, and comment this video. YouTube is full of amateurs' recipes to do pictures. And it's okay to spend a few hours with it. But if you want something more serious, more artistic, more personal, then you really need some serious education. And here we will give you links to some of the best ways to learn art professionally for a reasonable price. If you have a passion for art, an entire world of creative wonders awaits you with just a simple click on Theo's YouTube channel. Immerse yourself in the fascinating realm of his art projects, where you'll discover the secrets of painting with a credit card, embark on a journey to become a cyborg artist, delve into the intricacies of internet art, and explore the seamless fusion of artistic expression with the realm of artists' books.
Theo's channel unfolds a treasure trove of insights how contemporary artists think and work. For a more profound understanding of Theo's artistic journey, academic pursuits, and the compelling narrative of how an unassuming artist from Slovenia captured the attention of the New York Times, venture into Theo's website at www.spiller.si. There, you'll uncover the rich tapestry of an artist's career and academic exploration, offering a unique perspective into the evolution of an individual who has left an indelible mark on the global art scene.